Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. You know, I was perusing through the really messed up classical pages at Amazon, which I'm wont to do on a regular basis, and I found something that's still available, which kind of shocked me. It's this, Erato's Francois Couperin edition. This was originally issued in 2018 for the 350th anniversary of his well, what was it? Oh, I don't know. Birth, death, something like that. I mean, if you subtract 50 from 18, you get a something. Birth. It was birth because he died in like 1733. So that's what it must be. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is that it still exists. Of course, you don't really find it if you exist. It's rather fascinating how this process happens. You know, I, I, I typed in Cooperan edition, you know, in the search engine. Because I was just wondering if like it was still hanging around, you know? And what I got was Francois Couperin edition Erato. So I thought, yeah, that's it. So I clicked search and I got drain pipes and 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 and, and buzz saws and and sheet music and garage door openers and uh, you know, it was ridiculous. Nothing like this. It was not even visible on the first couple of pages. So then I started started chopping down. So I got rid of Francois. I thought that was screwing them up because there were so many Couperins. I don't know. I just left Couperin because I figured that way I'd get a Couperin, maybe not the right Couperin. Nothing. Same crap. So then I got rid of Erato. So it just said Couperin edition. And then finally this turned up. I think that may have been the last thing I needed to do. But it exists, 35 bucks for 16 CDs. What a deal. They're probably getting rid of overstock or what's left of it. You know what I mean? So so I, all I can say is if you're interested in this kind of thing, you should grab it. I'm going to tell you what's in the box. I mean, it's all very nicely performed. It's lovely stuff. The music, of course, is French Baroque at its best. Um, these are like original original jacket things. You get a decent booklet. Of course, no text and translations. But wow, the performances are really hot. Okay, first, we get the Leçon de Ténèbres. You know, Couperin's known for his keyboard music, but he wrote a lot of other stuff. He wrote sacred music. He was an organist, of course, at the Church of St. Gaston or something. I don't know, one of those French churches. And so, you know, he did he did organ music and he did chamber music. He was appointed the clavecinist du roi de la chambre de la cour de Versailles whatever, with Louis XIV. So he had quite an opportunity to expose himself. So here we have his Leçon de Ténèbres. Um, and they're, of course, rather somber and quite beautiful. This is a marvelous performance with William Christie and Sophie Daneman and Patricia Petitbon. Yum, yum. Lovely. Next, motets. I mean, everyone did motets in those days. And these are with Christophe Rousset and Les Talents Lyriques with Sandrine Piau. Oh, yes. And Jean-Paul Fauchecourt and Caroline Petitbon and Jérôme Correas, and oh, we had people you've never heard of. But we don't need to hear of them. We need to listen to them, right? Um, again, the music is really, really lovely. I like the set verset d'une motette composée de l'ordre du roi. Yes, there are a bunch of those. They were all composed on the order of the king. Hmm. Let's hope he liked them. Probably he did. Then we've got, of course, Les Nations. Les Nations is so much fun. Um, it's like all kinds of stuff here, along with, well, there's also, let's see, was more stuff than that. It just says Les Nations here, but what you really have is um, a motet for Easter Day and his Magnificat, and then the Les Nations, which is sonatas and suites of symphonies, trio sonatas, really is what they are, um, in four books separated by the commodity of the Academy of the, oh, I don't know what this all means, but they're just charming music all about the different national styles. You know, Baroque people did that then, you know, tons of it. So you get two volumes of that. And then you've got, let's see, the, the Concert Royal, um, which consists of, of all kinds of things written for the king, chamber music, for harpsichord, bassoon, viola de gamba, oboe, 
and the ensemble Richard Carr de Zurich under Michel Piguet. So there's look at that stuff. And then we've got, well, that's some of it. That's not all of it, but there's, I think, more of it later on in this edition. Um, then we've got La Parnasse. This, these were the first trio sonatas written in France. The Corellian trio sonata, you know, which is a piece for actually more than three people usually. But, um, you know, it was three parts, three voices, um, you know, keyboard and two other things, usually violins, if you were Corelli. Anyway, Couperin did Le pa La Parnasse, the apotheosis of Corelli. And then he did the, uh, the same thing, the apotheosis of Lully. Those are his two trio sonata things, which also try to reunite French and Italian taste. Today, it sounds mostly just like Baroque to us. You know, we're not as conscious of these differences as they were in Corelli's day, but that makes it, you know, gives you all the more reason to listen to it and see if you hear something. And then we have the Concert dans le goût de in the theatrical taste. That's so much easier. Um, and then we've got, let's see, this is, yeah, this is the Lully thing and all kinds of stuff. Chamber music and other things. This is with John Elliott Gardner. You know, he's a serious guy. And then we have the Messe pour les paroisses. Um, these are his two organ masses. The only two organ masses he wrote that survive because he wrote them early on in his career. And he was, look at this. I got it. I decided to get smart, by the way. Mm, lemon ginger with Tupelo honey. Yummy. And it really helps the voice, at least somewhat. Anyway, so we've got his two organ masses. Um, and they're charming, and Lionel Rogg plays them extremely well. They were praised by De La Lande, who said, yes, they're very, very nice. You see, Couperin is actually very interesting. His dad was the organist at St. Whatever it was. And when he died, he left the position to his son. You could do that in those days. And most of the time, those desires were respected. And so Couperin, when his father died, was 11. <laughs> so that was a problem. So they asked de la Lande to stand in until he turned 18 and was old enough to take over. And that's what he did. I mean, people were so much more gracious in those days, don't you think? I mean, really. And then we've got, let's see. Now we start with the Oeuvre de Clavecin, uh, played by Laurence Boulet. And you get all of it. She's, very, she's a very good harpsichordist. And here it all is. On like... Six, seven, oh my God. I mean, there's like, well, you know it. There's over 230 pieces in four books divided up into suites or ordre, as he called them. And there's just tons and tons of it. And there it all is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, eight and a bit, not eight-ish, nine-ish CDs worth of amazing keyboard music, which is, really come into its own. Just in the past, you know, 30 or 40 years, people play it now on the piano. I mean, Angela Hewitt made some beautiful discs of piano. I mean, Alexandre Tarot did it. I mean, you know, it's great music. It's great music. It works fabulously well on the piano, too, even though he wrote a treatise, L'Art de Toucher de Clavecin, the art of playing the harpsichord. One of the cool things about his harpsichord music was, like Bach, he wrote out a lot of the ornaments, and Bach admired Couperin. They corresponded. You can imagine they were they were two two sort of OCDC, you know, obsessive compulsive or OCD or whatever it's called guys who were not going to leave all the ornamentation just up to the players. No, no, no. They wrote down what they wanted, which is what makes these pieces so fulfilling. And then what do we have at the end here? Um, Oh, this is like just, um, oh, yeah, this is historical stuff. Really kind of cool. You've got Fischer Discal doing a bit of the Leçon de Tenebre. Fischer Discal, Edith Picht, Axenfeld, and Ermgard Poppen. And then we've got Lynn Harrell with the English Chamber Orchestra and Pinka Zuckerman doing some of the, uh, and these are arrangements, obviously, you know, mod for modern instruments of so the pièce en concert, the pieces that you can play either as a harpsichord solo or as chamber music. And then we've got, let's see, a bunch of keyboard pieces played by Georges Sifra. Yeah. And we've got some more of them done by Gina Backauer. And then finally, some classic, classic, classic Couperin performed by Marcel Meyer. This is a delightful disc of 
gems and, and arrangements. And, you know, it goes to show Couperin's enduring influence into the 20th century. So there we have it. I mean, 35 bucks for 16 discs. Now, you know, the music is quite varied. You're not going to probably want to listen to all of it. I mean, lots, sometimes it's hard to find complete sets of Couperin keyboard music because they tend to go in and out of print, as do boxes such as this. So if you don't have it and you're waiting, wait no longer. Grab it while you can for 35 bucks. It doesn't matter if you don't like half of it or don't want to listen to half of it. You'll listen to the other half. Find the stuff you like and you can sort through it. It's a steal. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.